In this lesson, we're going to learn about the lens correction tab right here. And what it does is basically, as the name says, it corrects the mistakes that your lens brought to the photo. Not your camera, your lens. So let's hit this triangle to expand it and we will learn a bit more about it. So it has two options. One is profile and one is manual. So this profile part is you're basically giving a preset to Lightroom for it to um, use for it to use so that it could fix the errors for you. Now chromatic aberration, uh, they normally come uh, show themselves as bits of color, sometimes purple, blue, and colors like that. And um, we will get into this with another photo example. But for this one, right now, this image was taken and it has some sort of distortion to it. It has a fish eye effect. And we also have these dark corners, and these happen because of my lens or the, the student's lens. And I can just click this to remove any chromatic aberration. It's um, an automatic thing. And then I can add a profile correction. And these are based on the presets. So you would have to choose the uh, lens, um, the lens brand that you have. But I wouldn't know what this uh, guy used. So I'm not going to get into this. And also the model. And also, um, there's only one of these, but you can add some if you want. And based off your lens uh, model, Lightroom already gives you a preset to work with. But I'm going to uh, turn this off because I don't know what this dude used. So enabling it this way, it's really easy. You don't have to do anything, but we'll get into the more um, manual side and also down here. Uh, if we turn this on, let's say I'm I'm just going to choose Nikon for now. I can change the distortion and also the uh, the sides. I can fix that, which is caused by the lens. This is what I looked before. It's what I looked after. It got rid of those, but we're not going to really talk about the automatic presets. So let's undo this and I'm going to get into this with another example. And so we're going to go to manual. Now in manual, you have a lot more control over how you correct your image. And uh, the first thing you're going to see is distortion. What distortion does is what the name says. It gives your image uh, a kind of fish eye effect or it removes that effect. And uh, if Constraint crop is basically it you tell Lightroom to crop out any of these white areas. So if I enable this, it will crop the image without the whites, which is a helpful thing to have. Let's um, go back to before this. And right now it does have a fish eye effect, so I'm going to reduce that by going to the right. Now, now it's looking normal. Let's enable this. And now my image looks a lot better. If you guys can see she's further from the camera and it has less of this fish eye effect. Now that was our mistake one. We fixed them the first mistake. We corrected the lens. The second mistake, um, we're going to use this in another example, like I said, is, uh, is the dark corners around the image which again, I did not add this, the lens caught this on its own. And it's pretty common, don't worry that maybe your lens has an issue. These things happen all the time. And that is why the lens correction tab is in the develop part of Lightroom. You can always um, just fix anything that's not right. And also in the first uh, couple lessons, we did talk that you could apply certain uh, adjustments during importing your image. So I could apply lens correction to my images while, they're in, while they import, so I don't have to deal with this while I try to develop my image. Okay, that's that. And then we can now get rid of the dark corners. Let me un oops, 
undo this. I can remove the amount or so I can uh, increase the amount by coming this way or completely remove the amount by doing this. You can also change the midpoint. Let's see, uh, do you want it to be more on the outside? Right now it's affecting the outside. We've reduced the size of the midpoints right here. Or do we want it done to the whole image? And that's what we wanted. But we're actually going to reduce it back to where it was to default because we don't want the subject to be uh, to get caught into this adjustment. We just want these sides. So now let's have another look. Okay, and now we have gotten rid of these dark corners just by moving a few sliders. And right now I have corrected my image. Let me zoom in to the, uh, maybe her hat and look for any chromatic aberration. I'm not seeing anything. Let's move uh, using this. And it's always helpful to look for um, chromatic aberration from your image because they're not that uh, easy to see. Okay, right now we don't really have one. So I would say that my image right now is corrected and I can move on with the other adjustments above this to further, um, further edit my image as I want it to be. Now let's look at another example where we can apply this uh, panel right here. I'm going to choose this image. Now, as you can see, this image, there's a lot of detail. There's so many colors. Um, there's different lighting and there is a guarantee that there is going to be chromatic aberration. I'm going to zoom in on the trees here. You can look everywhere, but usually they would, I don't know if you guys can see, but there's this purple um, hue coming from the trees. So I'm going to zoom in and yep, these are what they look like. Chromatic aberration. They come in colors that we mentioned. And, um, and guys, a lot of times when you zoom in, you will notice these red dots. Now, don't panic. These are not uh, permanent in your image and they won't be here when you uh, zoom in on another device or another program. These are white clippings. They just appear sometimes when you zoom in. Just hit J on your keyboard and they're gone. So that's something you should know so that you don't spend time trying to remove it. That's not how it's removed. Okay, so I got quite a lot of colors. I have some purples, I have some blues, and I'm going to use a different uh, option here to remove these coloring. Now, because these are purple, I can just move the slider and already they're gone. This is what it looked before. This is what it looked after. And we call these colors chromatic aberration. So now you know what this slider is for. And let's have a look at the uh, automatic version, see if it works just as well. In our case, it does not work. Uh, we could just go to the manual and use it for this example. It would work on others, you would just have to see. Now let me look at the other parts, see if we've successfully removed um, all of the chromatic aberration. And I'm not finding any more. I think we've gotten rid of it. And you could actually use other colors. Sometimes it would appear as green, it would appear as blue. Uh, again, it will appear as purple, appear as purple. And you could just simply uh, move these tabs to remove the color that you're trying to get rid of. Right now for me, it's purple. And after coming this way, I did notice some blue here. You guys can probably see it is a dark blue on the edge of my tree. So I'm going to find blue here. I'm going to move it to the left and it's gone. Let's reset that. Do you see the blue? Move it to the left. It's gone. Let's try the same thing with the red here. 
the red is gone. Here's what it looked before. Here's what it looks after. Um, let's find other colors. Um, hmm. I don't think I can see any more colors. I think we have successfully removed. They move at the top of the roof. Hmm, I'm not seeing anything else. Maybe let's zoom out a little bit. Maybe we're too zoomed in. And no, I do not see any more. Let's look at this, looking good. And guys, let's uh, zoom into the part that we just corrected. Was it here? And here's the before and here's the after. As you can see, we did remove some of those purple lines that are visible. Let's move to another location where we use this correction. And again, here the purple reddish lines are gone. This is what it looks after. Let's have a look at the ones here. And again, the purple hue is gone because we have defringed the image. And again, let's zoom out of this. Let me open the singular. We are seeing some dark edges on this as well. So we're going to use the same um, option we used for the previous image. And now it's gone. Let's have a look again. Dark edges, no dark edges. Simple technique, simple sliders, and we've just uh, fixed our image. So that's how you use the lens correction. It's not that complicated, but it's really helpful. I can also change uh, how distorted I want this image. We zoom out a bit. Constraint crop. And it's looking better. Let's have another look. It looks further. I did it a small amount, but if I do it more, you guys can see that there is a difference. Let's bring it back to where it was. I think this is where we were. All right. And that's how you use it. It's really simple. I hope you guys learned a lot from this lesson. Uh, lens correction is something that you should use for every single image because we don't want to, let's say, publish this or print it and then we'll notice all those small little uh, mistakes that were made by the lens and, that it, and then it will be too late. We will have already published the image. So make sure you always zoom in on the details of your uh, image. Use the navigator panel to uh, easily move across the selected area and that is how you use the lens correction. In the next lesson we'll learn more about the transform tab which is something uh, a bit complex but not really. It does take a little while for you guys to get a hold of how you want to use it for each style of image but once we get to walk through it together it won't be as difficult. So I'll see you in the next lesson. Goodbye for now.